worth it. The greatest compliment I can pay any manufacturer is that their new product is so well refined and improved in one generation over their previous product that it's worth flipping it for the new product. It's exceedingly rare that changes from year to year on phones are worth that effort. But it's interesting looking at lower cost options to see if that price performance economy plays the same as more premium fare. What's fascinating is how similar these two phones are for a year separating them. The Pixel 3a today still feels like a capable daily driver, but in using the 4a for a while, each little tweak and refinement adds up to a nicer experience. Revolutionary? <laughs> Not at all, but noticeable. Some folks are going to appreciate the refined design, shrinking some of the bezels, streamlining the build. The chipset is a hair more powerful, and the extra RAM should help smooth out heavier multitasking situations. The cameras, microphones, speakers, and headphone jacks all perform similarly. Where the 4A might enjoy some wins over the 3A, I think most consumers would be hard pressed to see or hear significant differences. It's the storage. That might be a purchasing motivator. Google phones don't have expandable storage and the 3A only came in a 64 gig flavor. Now that's plenty of room for a professional iPhone, but Android users might need a bit more space than that. Sorry, I couldn't help myself there. Uh, more than just doubling the storage capacity though, the 4A also uses a faster storage technology. I'm not gonna turn this video into a monologue on the differences between EMMC and UFS. You can read those white papers all on your own. Ultimately, what we care about, there's more room for activities, and those activities run a little quicker. Google's strategy for the 4A makes a lot of sense. Smaller, incremental improvements, modest refinement, but keeping the core of what made the 3A so successful. Not only do we get a better phone a year later, it arrives at a cheaper launch price than where the 3A started. Now, that's not too shabby for such a solid performing phone to come in at a price cheaper than a Samsung or Apple smartwatch. I really should try and find like a corsage strap that I can like tie to the Pixel and just keep it wrist mounted, make a, make a better smartwatch. And that's the breakdown. On the surface, spec for spec for spec, I'm not inclined to say the 4A is improved enough to warrant the one year upgrade except for those people who really are running into the storage limit on the regular. Considering a Pixel 3a in good condition is still selling for around maybe just under $200 on Swappa, that could go a decent way towards doubling your storage on the Pixel 4a. And maybe I have a promo link to get a free month of service on Google Fi on the somegadgetguy.com support page. Maybe that's a thing. It's not an outright recommendation for the Pixel 4a, but there are certainly going to be people who really like their 3a and will appreciate a little more room. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, and subscribing. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical, even for a channel my size. I hope you'll check out the links down below, which help me not pack every video with baked in ads and sponsorships. You can check out the support page on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by from my Patreon. Those are super cool tech pals, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at Some Gadget Guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.